Yay, so we are live. And for those who don't know me, my name is Pietro Diamant. I'm an awareness artist for endangered species. I'm also the founder of the Matriarch Women's Club, Women for the Wild. I'm sitting next to Tony Brockhoven from Beauty Without Cruelty. And we are going to do a co-host today where we are calling um, the government to take action and ban animal circuses. So the Namibian government, this is who we're speaking to. The South African government, this is who we're speaking to. We will be speaking to South Africans, Namibians. I have a panel of women today that are all part of amazing animal organizations doing amazing work, okay, in South Africa and in Namibia. Um, the reason for the call is to ban the circus. Tony has been protesting. She has written letters to the government. She has stood outside with thousands, thousands Hundreds. of people. Well, and over the, over over the years, years, it's become thousands. Yes, yes, thousands of people. I just want to get your face in here so we can see you more clearly. So I have a lot um, that I've written down. I will be speaking to Earth Alive 365. Well, that's me speaking on behalf of Earth Alive 365. Then we have Beauty Without Cruelty today. We have Ban Animal Trading, Millions Against Animals and Circus. Um, circuses um, and there's an association being created for this so we would love for you to join us members and sign up and help this because we finally want to put an end to this so we can focus on other areas as well okay and one one important thing if you ban an animal circus in one country that inspires people in another country to ban animal circuses if you stand up for animals in this country you stand up for animals in other countries that are still experiencing the cruelty the violence the conditioning Okay, what do I think is cruel? I think it is absolutely 100% cruel to take a baby from a mother, animal or human. Okay, then condition this baby, animal or human, to do things that are unnatural. Okay, and then it's cruel not to have them in their natural environment. It's cruel not to have them in an, in um, in a setting that is fitted to to them, that is natural to them, where they are supposed to be. Yeah. They're supposed yes. to be. So beauty without cruelty, ban animal trading, Namibians against animals and circuses. Then I'm speaking to Liberty. Liberty created the protest in Namibia. Um, to keep a so-named circus out of Namibia. I'm not going to say the name right now, but I think everybody knows. And then I'm speaking to Hannah. Um, that's from the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, the SPCA Vinduk. And then Renal from Annie's Animal Legal Fund. So we are calling on, on action to be taken to ban animal circuses. We are calling on the Namibian government to ban animal circuses in Namibia to prevent animal circuses from going to Namibia and practicing or performing or using animals for entertainment. We're calling on the South African government to ban animal circuses in South Africa. I was under the impression that we only still had one circus here in South Africa. We do. Africa. We have one traveling animal circus in South Africa. The others have um, died a natural death. The, mm -hmm. the previous one closed down. The owner became too ill and frail. Yeah. Um, and the original Boswell Wilkie Circus is now a a standalone circus um, that is in one venue, but they have no animals. And the whole idea behind them is that you go there and you be entertained, but you can also um, have birthday parties there. So what they would do is they would teach the children how to walk on a balance beam and behave as clowns, and they dress them up and all the rest of it, which sounds like great fun. Um, but there is only one traveling animal circus in South Africa, and we love the circus we keep saying this over and over we love the circus those who have human acts who have chosen that life for themselves and it's really quite simple i mean why do we not want animal circuses well animals aren't here to entertain us mm. end of that's it in a nutshell mm. however it goes further than that because we need to clarify what the reasons are um they never get to have home turf of their own because they're constantly traveling. And all animals we know have their own home territory. Um, they don't even get to be able to build up to a speed because they're in such an enclosed, confined area. And they, tra they also travel almost all the year through. Mm -hmm. They're exposed to noise and lights and pollution and people. And saying they're used to it is actually irrelevant. Um, diabetics have to, so certain diabetics have to inject themselves every day. They're used to it. That doesn't mean they like it. It doesn't mean they're happy with it. Um, it might be a weird combination, but that was, or, or, or analogy, but that was what sprung to head 
Yes, right it's natural. Now. That's what it's, comes to mind today. Yes, yes. yes. Um, but also, uh, research is showing more and more that children who go to animal circuses don't, A, don't learn anything about the animal, but also they lose their sense of compassion and, and the, the lingering emotion that they retain is that animals are here for our amusement. Animals are not entitled to their own lives. They're not entitled to privacy. I mean, it, that's not something we often think of, but mm. animals who are um, being used and exploited by humans have no privacy. Yeah. Um, we take it for granted that we have access to privacy as and when we need to. Yes. Animals don't get that. Yes. So then I, there are a number of, of other issues as well. Yes. Um, and... And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm no, interrupting no, 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 you, no, no, but no. The, the circus line that they're saving these animals from being, being hunted, uh, yes, I agree with that. But a life in a cage is not a life. And if their intentions were as honourable as that, they would have rescued the animals, they would have them in a sanctuary, their own or somebody else's, and they would not be making money from them. And there's a huge difference between going to a sanctuary to see animals living in as close to natural an environment as possible and going to a circus where they are obliged to perform tricks for human amusement. Yeah. It's just, it is absolute insanity and I cannot believe that we're still doing this in 2020. I mean, yeah, yeah one shy short. Yeah, I mean, it's, yes. it's, yes. And I, I am speaking at pertaining to one particular circus now. So, you know, these animals do not get rescued. <laughs> they don't. They get bought into mm. the circus. They become the property of that circus and of the owner of that circus, and they get used as a commodity. So it would be the same when you buy a human being, and now this human being belongs to you, and now you do child trafficking or sex slaving or whatever that is. It, this is the same thing, okay? So they haven't rescued these animals. They were bought as babies. And I can only presume that they were bought from the same breeders who, I mean, and this is just assumption, yet again, this is, this is just me assuming, that they were bought from the same breeders who are breeding lions and tigers for purposes like zoos, circuses, canned hunting, trophy hunting, captive hunting, the lion bone trade, the tiger bone trade, the liger bone trade, the tiger bone trade. The tiger bone trade. If we are going to talk about all animals, let's talk about all of these animals, right? So this is our call for today. So we're calling on action to be taken. And I'm going to say this again from the Namibian government and from the South African government to simultaneously come together and ban animal circuses, period. So today, we would also like to raise our concerns for animals being used as entertainment at tourists and other public establishments, um, you know, to attract visitors. So that's another thing, you know. Um, ban the animal circuses, and then we focus on the next step. Animals have a right to live free and wild. No animal deserves to live a life in a cage. This is cruel. Why is it cruel? It's a cage. Well, think of it as in, in human terms. Um, imagine spending the rest of your life in your bathroom. Or even oh, just in the view, bar. But I mean, you know. Yes. Um, it's cruel. It, it is, is a cruel, 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 cruel practice. And... Um, it's so unnecessary. You know, we, we've we gone out. We started, you know, our expeditions. We reached the continents. We saw these beautiful animals. Oh, wow, they're so beautiful. Then we think, oh, we have to go and show everybody back home. So we take these animals from their continents. And we go and we travel over the seas and we take them back home. And they get there and everybody's so entertained. And they're so beautiful. And, yes, they're so beautiful. People love them. Okay, and what happens? What happened? We open up zoos, we open up circuses. What happens? Because human beings are all, I don't want to say twisted, but we're all sort of like, we need to be entertained. We have this, this need to be entertained and now we have something else that can entertain us. So let's see if they can ride a little bicycle. Let's see if they can jump through hoops. Oh, wow, they can do that. Oh, how amazing. Oh, but now they're not obeying. So what do we do as human beings? Oh, something needs to obey us, so we get angry. Then we want to control and we want to dominate. So what happens to these animals? I'm not saying that this is what's happened to the South African circus, but how do we get animals to listen? 
when they're not being obedient? What if what has happened to so many elephants in other circuses? What's that whole thing that they use the bull hook? Mm, bull hook. Okay, so imagine if I had to get a bull hook and I had to hook you, or I had to hook your child, or your parent, or somebody that you love, or your dog, or your cat, or your bird. Well, it's the equivalent of taking a pair of scissors and using the one time to to jab you. All yes. The time. That's that's basically what yes. a bull hook is. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. So that's what happens. Yes. Okay. So. This is the thing that we want to end. Why do we want to end it on a global scale? Why do we want to end it? Because it is cruel. Cruelty leads to violence. Violence lead to attracting violent people, I think. Mm. You know? Attracting violent people. I, I've spent the whole night going through in my head, fighting. Yes. <laughs> I, I literally couldn't sleep today because I was so nervous because... I have amazing people on board doing amazing things today. Okay, all four animals. And what are the governments doing? Snipping. They're keeping us here in this container. We can't get out. We have to keep on protesting. We can't focus on other things because we're still, what's that thing? Yeah. I cannot believe that I still have to protest this. This is what's happening. Tony, I I've overstepped my hour of speaking and it's over to Beauty Without Cruelty. Now, but no, we're no, going to no. co-host this and then somebody else is going to come on. 11-11, your I think most of the most of, most important um, at the moment is I've been trying to get hold of the Minister of Tourism and the State Vet in Namibia without success. Um, I know my emails, I'm assuming, have reached them and I can't get anybody to answer the phone. And in fairness to them, that happens here as well, getting anybody in government to to answer a phone is, yes. is quite a quite a task. Yes, but so I think that's a that is a real real point that we need to focus on on the individuals, and the reason we we've, it's a two pronged approach. Approaching the Minister of Tourism from a people go to Namibia to see animals in their natural habitat, and it is such a beautiful country. They don't go there to see animals in 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 circus rings. And Namibians shouldn't be doing this either for the, exactly the same reason. So, the, so that's from a, from a tourism and an environmental point of view. And then from the state vet side, it is the fact that these animals may carry pathogens across the border. And we know that they need to be um, subjected to rabies injections and, mm. and parasite uh, infusions both for internal and external and a number of other things and all of this has to be in place to go over the border and then of course on their return they've got to go through the same thing again and it makes no sense for for this to happen as I say again th this is 2019 yes. um, 2019 with, with going into 2020 I mean with, if we're going yeah. to the moon for God's sake you know, why is it so difficult for humanity to evolve? Like, why do we have this inherent thing to own and control something? Because we're selfish. Because we are selfish. And we need to change our ways. And we need to teach our children how to be better human beings, better than us. So both the Namibian and South African government have received letters from organizations calling on action to be taken like Beauty Without Cruelty. Okay? Yes. Yes. Well, we, we've we've spent a number of years... Uh, trying to affect change in South Africa, but yeah. it, it will certainly work better with a coalition. Yes, and we certainly need more input from the public. And and this is where it's difficult, especially here, because when the circus goes into areas where people don't have much access to entertainment, they don't have much access to anything. Um, it would be the highlight of their year, and. And it becomes a very difficult and, and I found difficult subject um, when we did a demo in an area where the people were not well off, the access to anything was limited, um, and and you could see it was exciting for them to to go to the circus. Um, but, and I've always said it's not about us and it's not about the people who go to the circus and it's not even about the circus owners. It's about the animals. But we have to take cognizance of the fact that this is a form of entertainment. That, that So it, it, it's also a matter of being subtle and 
and tactful about yeah. how we go about these things and how we how we point it out. And we also need to emphasize the fact that jobs will not be lost if the circus goes animal free, <laughs> because apparently the acts are absolutely outstanding. Um, they are extremely talented, but the point is that they've chosen to be there. And that's what we need to focus on. We need to we need to point out that that there are plenty of international circuses which are animal free, have always been animal free and are doing extremely well. And to say, oh well, if we don't have the animals, we'll close down. That yeah. it's not an excuse. It's not mm -hmm. a it's not a valid reason to continue exploiting these animals. It it is that simple. Mm -hmm. um, it, because anybody then could turn around and say, well, you know, if I stop dealing drugs, then I won't have any money to feed my family. <laughs> well, I mean, that's terribly sad, but, but there, are other there, are, there are other avenues, yes. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, I think it would be best if we work as a coalition, and I think it... It, it, um, it has to end. It, well, it has to end. Yeah. And I can't believe that that our local governments, as in South African and Namibian, yes, we all know governments don't like being told what to do by other countries, but the fact is that over 50 other countries have already banned animals in some fashion or form. Some are completely, some are wild animals only, some, uh, there are one or two of them who have said no animals who have been taken from the wild may be used. Um, but honestly, if you take an animal from the wild, how are you going to use it? Yes. You can't use it. Then you have to abuse it. And then you, you end up seeing all the things on, online. Yes. Yes. So, um, and then and then in certain countries, for example, Spain hasn't specifically outlawed animal circuses, but over 50 of their cities have. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that that is, is quite something. Yes. Um, and I know that one of the excuses here is that, well, I understand it. The municipality cannot reasonably refuse to rent their property to an animal circus just because they don't approve of animal circuses. Because where do we draw the line? Because then we not, might need to hire municipal ground and they can say, well, we don't agree with whatever stance you're going to be promoting at this event, so therefore you cannot. So they can, they, there is no legal, logical, reasonable reason for them not to be able to do it. We don't might not have to like it, but we need to accept that they are also only bound by what they can and cannot do. Um, although, of course, yes, they could say, as other small towns around South Africa have done, is that our constituency doesn't want the animal circus here. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we are not going to rent them ground. The only way we're going to change this is is legislation, which is, as we know, really difficult, um, especially in South Africa for a sort of reasons that we all know. But the other side of it is continued education of the public. The more people turn away from the animal circus, the less viable it makes it for them to continue doing what they do. Yes. Yes. So basically, Beauty Without Cruelty has been speaking to the government, to the South African government. She's been writing to the Namibian government to no avail. Why aren't you answering? If you go to my website, we have the ministers, we have everybody listed on there, all the letters that were sent. Why aren't they answering? Please answer us. Okay, please work with us. Please let's make the country not as violent. Okay, please teach the children something else. So we ask that the people, the public, both nations stand in solidarity with animals, especially animals that are enslaved and used for entertainment, be it for circuses, zoos, or other establishments. This is so important. If we stand up for animals here, we stand up for animals on a global scale on the planet. Okay? Let's be the leaders. Let's 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 be the, the, the way showers. All right. The so, way showers? The way showers. Is that the is that the no, no that's not the term, the, but we know what you mean. You know what I mean. Okay. <laughs> she means the leader. The, yeah, we'll be, yeah, let's be the leaders and let's also the be out in front and, and yes. Yes, be out in front, but also don't go and start yet another organization. There are so many organizations that are doing the work that you could join. Yes, absolutely. Beauty Without Cruelty, I mean, this person right here, I said it before, absolute hero. I've seen her in action. I've heard her voice. I've seen her <laughs> do what you do yeah. so, so beautifully, and she welcomes each and every one with the most open, loving heart, okay, for one single purpose, and that is for animal 
liberation. <laughs> I wanted to use other words, but really animal liberation, animal, animal welfare. Animal liberation is the right, is the right yes. word. So animals are not here for our entertainment. Animals are not here for us to use, abuse, exploit, treat it as commodities. Okay, all animals are sentient beings just like us. So where is my next person that's supposed to come online? Otherwise, we have to continue speaking. <laughs> So I am supposed to get uh, Kathy from Ban Animal Trading come online now. I hope that she can. So we'll see. Maybe they have a bit of a time difference. But this is what we want. No, okay. no time difference. It's a couple of hours up the road. Yes, well, maybe on the phone, one oh, or I two see. minutes. Yeah. Okay. So humanity, each and every one of us, are required to step up, to step up, to step up, okay, to evolve. To leave the old ways at the door, to look at everything as if you're looking into the eyes of the creator and to respect and honor that animal, that being, okay, that species, that fellow earthling, because we are not alone here. The earth wasn't made just for us. No, we just behave like it is. Yes. The earth wasn't made for humans, okay? The earth was here and everybody was welcome and we all came. And what are we doing? God, sometimes I feel really ashamed to call myself a human being. Anyway, and then I see the palm wheel thing. So Namibia, Namibians, we call on you to ban animal circuses. South Africa, South Africans, we call on you to ban animal circuses. I don't know where my next speaker is, but this is what we're calling on you today. Okay. Animals have a right to be free. Animals have a right to be in the wild and remain in the wild. So while we wait for the next person, I'm going to read this. This was a letter to the Namibian government from Munee Gredeke, Namibia. Dear Honorable Mr. Puhamba, be shafeta. And I do apologize if I get the, the spelling wrong, the wrong. We need your help and that of the Ministry of the Environment and Tourism as well as of Parliament. Please stop the McLaren Circus from touring Namibia. Please stop the McLaren Circus from touring Namibia. These are local Namibian people. She is representing other people, a group of people, part of your community, part of your nation, part of Namibia. These are Namibians stepping up, saying, no, we don't want this here. We want to do better than that. We want to join the rest of the world. We want to join other nations. We want to stand in solidarity with animals. We want to stop the cruelty. We want to stop the abuse. Please put Namibia on the global map as the first African country to ban animal circuses. Why? Why do we want that? Because we want to say that we're proudly Namibian. Or South Africa. Please put South Africa on the map as the first South African country to ban animals um, in, or the use of animals in circuses. Why? Because we want to be proudly South African. And let's face it. Can we really say that we are proudly South African? When we look at what's happening to our lions. Why do we have more lions in captivity than in the wild? Why do we have more tigers in captivity than in the wild? Why is South Africa bringing in tigers to breed with lions so that we can produce heavier bones and then feed that to China or Asia? Why are we doing that? I'm not proudly South African. I'm not even proudly Namibian at the moment. I'm actually just proudly ashamed right now to call myself a human being. I asked Tony the other day, I said, you know, what does love mean? And she said, action. And I, I asked her about humanity. When I have to answer the word humanity, I literally want to cry. I want to cry. I want to bore my eyes out because the amount of pain that we inflict on each other and then the amount of pain that we inflict on other earthlings, species, it, it's too much. It really is too much sometimes to, to handle. It, it's too much. And why are the governments not helping people to heal? Why are the governments that come on board and say, okay, well, if we stop this practice, if we stop the circus, if we stop the zoo, if we stop this, you know, the trade, if we stop the killing, if we stop the culling, Okay, we're going to help the people because this is what we are about. Earth Alive 365 was created to work with animals, but when you work with animals, you work with people because why? Because people love animals. 
So what are we doing? Let Namibia lead Africa on the contentious and crit crucial issue. The majority of the first world countries have already implemented the banning and or restriction of animal circuses. The majority of the first world countries have already implemented the banning and or restriction of animal circuses. A total of 53 countries have put their foot down to ban or restrict animal circuses. Why have they done this? So, the letter continues and she says, we are writing in our capacity as advocates for the rights of animals and supporters of the campaign to ban animal circuses in Namibia. And beauty without cruelty to ban animal circuses in South Africa. And I'm going to speak on behalf of ban animal trading right now. I had a meeting with them yesterday. They've been fighting this. It's on their website. They have information on there. Where are the people that, that are, that, that, Advocate that they love animals, not advocate. You, you know, you're online and you say that you love animals, but where are you? And where's your money? We need money to, 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 to do the work that we do. I mean, how, how much you've offered to even relocate mm. some of the animals in, this, in the current yes. circus that's still currently traveling. Beauty Without Cruelty has offered to relocate these animals to a sanctuary. It takes money to do that. Where are the business people, the businessmen and women? You don't want to say it out loud. You don't want to voice your concerns. You don't want to call on the government to action, but you can do it silent. You can do it silently. You can support these organizations. You can help them relocate those animals so that they can use their money and maybe go and help a child. Maybe go help a woman. Maybe go help other animals. Sorry that my hand's going in your no, face the whole time. Not. That's okay. Okay. We have to do better. We have to do better than what we are doing now in Namibia, South Africa. We have to do better. We cannot say that we are proudly Namibian, proudly South African, and we do not take care of the wild. Gandhi said, what was that word from Gandhi? It's come to mind now, where he says a you nation... Can, you, a nation can be judged by the way they treat the animals. The moral the, status of a nation can be judged by the way they treat yeah, the animals. The moral status, and do forgive us if we get it wrong, but the, the moral status of the nation can be judged by the way that they treat their animals and how are we treating our animals. And where does the cruelty start? It starts at home. It starts at home. If you don't teach your child respect, if you don't teach your child to respect animals, if you, don't, if you yourself don't even respect yourself, we have to really look at ourselves. We have to look at what we're doing as human beings. We've gone too far. We've took the scales too far. We are losing species on this planet. And what has contributed to this? Hmm? Expeditions. Going out into the world. Seeing all the beautiful things in the world. But then we want it. We want to make it ours. We want to control it. We want to dominate it. And then what happens? Species go extinct. So the nation has to rise. South Africa, ban animal circuses. Namibia, ban animal circuses. I have more. <laughs> so, Tony, how long have you been protesting the circus? 10 years. A decade. A decade. A decade. That's <laughs> 10 years. 10 years of standing on the streets. 10 years of writing letters. 10 years of going with banners, it, getting people yeah, together. It's actually, so much work. We started um, protesting the circus basically the year that they started going national because they'd only started for three years prior to that and they were fairly localized. Yeah. Um, and so the year that they actually did their first national tour was the year that we, we started um, protesting, protesting, begging, yeah. pleading, um, and and we know things have changed. I mean, we initially, I mean, for example, we were able to get hold of a mall who was going to host them, and they decided that they were that they they pulled the their their permission from the circus, yeah. um, which then led to the circus instituting serious contracts uh, for for venues so that yeah. they, they they had had to if you said yes, there was no getting out of it. Yeah. Um, 
And yes, we knew months in advance before when they were going to where they were going to be. But again, our our concerted and diligent uh, efforts in in that regard from from a distance um, means that now we only have sort of two weeks advance notice of where they're going to be. Sometimes only a week. Um, but but yes, again, I say it, it's not. Everything comes down to the public, and we've been very lucky in that at practically every single demo that we've done, we've had somebody driving past us to the circus and coming back and saying, yeah, we, we saw your posters, we thought about it, we're not going. We, yeah. We're going some, you know, we, we'll go to the movies or something instead, yeah. which is fantastic because if it's just one person, that, that one person speaks to somebody else and they speak to somebody else, and, and you know, that's how the word spreads. Yes. Um, and oh, look! We make no mistake. We still have people defending the the, the the circus in no uncertain terms, and we still have people driving past us, sort of shaking their fists and saying, "You know, well, I can't repeat the language here because we're on air." But yes. but um, I'll repeat demanding to know why why we're we doing what we're doing, yeah. um, or making other you know ridiculous remarks, yeah. which has always fascinated me because. Surely, I may decide what I wish to do with my time, yes. as are you, as yes. is everybody else. Yes. You know? um, I can decide whether it's wasted or not. Absolutely, there'd be other things I'd rather be doing. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah. I want to find out. You know, I'm. I we supposed to have a panel, but I'm wondering if people are struggling getting into this link. We tested everything in the week. We everybody could get in. I tested it this morning again. People could get in. I'm not sure what is happening, why um, the panel speakers aren't coming in. So there's obviously a software bug. Well, maybe what we must do is postpone it. Do a yeah. a sort of a teleconference offline yeah. when it, at a con, at a convenient time for everybody, yes. and then and then share that. Yeah. yeah. Well, they have the that times, they have everything, but I'm thinking there's maybe a, some other thing that's now yes. come up with Google. So I just, there's there's a couple of things more before we close. Um, I want to give them still some time to come on board and see maybe one or two comes on. I mean, this is just an hour long. Um, and if nobody comes on, then, um, then we're going to have to do it again. And then we also thank everybody who has come to, okay, let me see. There's a message coming through. Brunel. I can try now if you want. Yes, Renelle, please try now. Thank you. Yes. Yes, please. And sometimes these things just don't go as we planned. So I have to, I'll do it better sometime. I don't know what's going on. But anyway, everything's going to happen. Not Renelle, haha, ha, Liberty. Yes, please, Liberty, come on. You were you are meant to come on at 140 and Savannah's we now, yeah. yeah we can do it now. We would love to hear your voice. Thank you so much. Okay, Petrex Coco and YouTube. So we have some people watching from YouTube. If you if you um if you start watching this, click on the share button, share it immediately, and ask people to share it as well. Yay! Yay! Nice oh. to meet you. So, I want to introduce this woman. So this is Liberty Faban. She's created the protest for keep um, keep a so named circus um, out of Namibia. Liberty, this is Tony. Tony, that's Liberty. And these Hi, are nice to meet you. Incredible women. Liberty, um, raise your concerns and state um, state your request. Well, basically, I mean, someone on Vegans of Namibia posted uh, a link to the circus page, which is when I first found out about it. So as a knee jerk reaction, I created the petition because, as we know, petitions, they only do so much. It's more of a way of gauging how many people are on your side than actually making efficient change. And for me, it was immediately a reaction like, OK, let's see who's on our side, because I've always been anti circuses, as I'm sure both of you guys have. And I just immediately started it on the wrong platforms. It turns out I should have used change.org. They were way better. <laughs> and I just had to know. And it, it started growing pretty fast, but not as fast as the McLaren page. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? This is the thing. So this is Liberty City. You know, we have the petition links um, in the YouTube link, and we also have the petitions on YouTube. And I'm going to share it again and again and again until we get people that have signed up on 
it doesn't matter from where you are in the world, whether it's South Africa, Namibia, sign up. Liberty, you know, there are a lot of people in Namibia. We're going to take you now to speak on behalf of others as well because you're in the group. Um, a lot of people have stated their concerns about animals. You know, they don't want their kids to see it. They don't want these animals to go through it. Um, what, what's the word on that side? Um, well, that's the thing. I mean, the people I mostly encounter and the people that I speak to are all anti the circus. But because of the amount of time I spend online, I've had to conversate with, as Tony said, a lot of the people on the other side who mm -hmm. think that they deserve a right to see a tiger and their children will be delighted by this lion doing a backflip through a flaming hoop, you know? And I, I, in countries where they have decimated the wildlife, you can almost understand it. You know, in a country where it's a concrete jungle and they have nothing left, I can almost understand it. But in Namibia, there's no reason for that. You know, our Namibia wildlife resorts in March run 75% off for Namibians. So if you want your children to see a lion and stuff, they can do it. They can do it. You save up and you go on a family holiday. And I mean, there can be so many more initiatives like that. There should be freebies for Namibian children to go and see lions and do these things because we have it at our disposal. But bringing these captive, tormented animals across the border, I just, I, it boggles my mind. Yeah. Well, Liberty, you're amazing. I think you are such a, um, a beautiful human being and such a strong person to have started this petition. Not a lot of people would have, do it, would have done it. And um, have you had any reaction or have you had any feedback? You know, have you also written a letter to the government um, stating that they keep the circus out or are you still waiting for people to sign up and how many people do you need? I kind of have a package together. When we reached 2000 signatures on the petition, what I wanted to do is make a, a big thing out of it almost and present the petition with a letter, hopefully with a group of people to the minister at the same time, put an article in the newspapers and just really, because people only really respond to something when it's everywhere. One article, one yes. video doesn't do it. They need to be inundated with it. You know, we need to go full Kardashian with the circus story. Ooh. Yes, yes, we need to go full Kardashian and vegan Kardashian, not yeah, even exactly. Kardashian, but vegan right. Kardashian. So to the South Africans watching, to the Namibians watching, I'm going to add Liberty's details, and I want you to write a letter to the government and send that to her so that she can send that off with her petition with her letters, with everything that she's doing to the governments. And I want you to make a copy and, um, and if possible, even send that through to me and we will list it on the website. That would be great. Mm -hmm. Yes, that would be amazing. Um, Liberty, you know, what would you like to say to the government? You know, because we don't want to fight the government. We want to work together with the government. And we also want to work together with the nation so that we can become a better nation. Yeah. Well, I mean, as Tony said, you know, the, the best way to change these things is legislation. But legislation anywhere in the world, and especially in Africa, is difficult to tackle and difficult to process and get through. The governments are going through a lot and dealing with corruption and all of these things. But another thing she said also triggered me is that action is love. Love is action, you know. And mm -hmm. yes, we need to work on the government and we need to get these things to the government. But these shows are only made possible by ticket sales. So when the buying stops, the shows stop. So while we need to access the government, we also really need to get the people on our side, you know? Mm. And I believe that the people who want to see these things, they're not evil. It's exactly as Tony said, a lot of them are in rural areas, a lot of areas where there are no distractions and no joy. So who am I to deny them the circus that's come to town? But they would get every single, the same amount of joy if there were no animals. Mm. If it was gymnasts and Cirque du Soleil kind of things, acrobats and stuff, it's, it's the experience that's the joy, you know? Mm. Yes. Yes, beautifully said. Thank you so much. Yes, you know, I would love to support you and I'm going to have a meeting with you after this and I'm, I would love to support you and love to see people support you and get that petition numbers up so that you can send that through to the government ASAP. So Namibian journalists, South African journalists, this is a woman to contact. Tony is a woman to contact. Please, please make contact with them. If you see this video, get the word out. Okay, we don't want to work against anybody. We want to work together with people. And we understand that circuses have traditions like everything else, but traditions change. Mm. Traditions change. So I want to, um, Hannah, do you, ugh, Liberty, do you have anything else to say? Otherwise, I want to ask Hannah to, to jump the gun and come on board after you if she's Perfect. available right now. No, I but, just uh, want to finish off quickly just saying, you know, as you said, it's, it's a dying breed. You know, this is the last traveling wildlife circus in South Africa. After over 140 years, Ringling Brothers has, you know, finished using animals. The people who maintain that this is still a great thing are, you know, on the waning side. And keeping it alive serves no purpose. But yeah, 
That's it for me. Give me liberty or give me death. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Give me liberty or give me death. Yes. And, you know, I love your name as well. I mean, that's beautiful. Is that your real name? Yeah. That's amazing. I love your mom. I don't know, but I, I love you. You're a strong name. And I want to tell you something. You know, you were a bit reluctant to come on board and you had, you know, you were like, am I going to be okay? You are so strong. And if we can get more people like you in the world, uh, the world would be a better place. So please don't hide your voice. Please be um, this incredible woman and activist. And I get so emotional when I when I speak to you right now. But just please be the voice for animals. We can't I'm do it alone. I'm both of you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'd like to work with you and let's see how we can get things going forward. Definitely. I'll send you a message today. Yeah. <laughs> Allies. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for having me. Yay. Thank Cheers. you so much, Liberty. Thank you so much. So um, I have word from uh, Ban Animal Trading. No, you weren't, you weren't online weren't online um so apparently she had gone into the let's see this is savannah had trouble connecting <laughs> some swear words <laughs> anyway so we're calling on the government to take action i have banned animal trading um on my whatsapp now and she says swear word what now so um i just want to say to her i'm gonna phone her quickly while we're on the queue, this is what it is. Hi, uh, Kathy. So, Agbeti, so we have you um, online. I'm not sure if people are going to be able to hear you, but oh, okay. yeah. So, if you just quickly want to say something for ban animal, um, for ban animal trade in in South Africa. And hi, Kathy. It's nice to meet your voice. It's Tony here. Hello. <laughs> hi, Tony. <laughs> you know, I just went and did a whole like. 10 minute talk and I was talking to myself every day. No, Shay, no. <laughs> I don't know. Just me, you know. Oh uh, how long do I have? Can so, you, well, you have until somebody comes up. So, um, you have, and then if people can't hear it, then what I will do is I will record it um, and, or type it out, but, but speak. Okay, so I'll start again. <laughs> okay, I'm Kathy Raffray, one of the directors for Ban Animal Trading in South Africa. We're an animal rights advocacy organization that opposes all forms of exploitation and abuse of animals. So our activism campaigns span the whole spectrum of animal rights issues. Um, the one relevant to today's talk um, is obviously animals used for entertainment, specifically animal circuses. Okay, so let's start with the reasons why um, there are problems with animal circuses. If we look at the South African legislation that governs animal-related issues, there are basically two acts. There's the Animal Protection Act 71 of 1962 and the Performing Animal Protection Act 24 of 1934. Um, currently, there is talk of an amendment bill that aims to update um, the Performing Animal Protection Act, uh, so that should hopefully cross fingers be um, out soon. Um, but now both of these acts are, you, you can see, totally and hopelessly out of date and focus purely on the very, very basic animal welfare requirements of animals. So in short, animals need access to food and water, they need access to shelter from the elements, and they need access to vet care when they need it. Now, we all know that animals need far more than their basic physical needs being met. Um, and the legislation as it stands now does not address their psychological and emotional needs at all. It does not address their right to live free from financial and any other form of exploitation. It does not address a more advanced level um, um, of their physical needs. Um, in short, it doesn't protect their rights at all. Mm -hmm. So as a result, our, what we're seeing happening is that our animal protection agencies like the SPCA and the NSPCA, um, they are very limited in terms of what they can enforce under the law. So where animal circuses or the circus animals are concerned, the relevant SPCAs can go and check on the animals at the circus. Um, 
and just, you know, check the basics that they have access to food and water and shelter and that they are in an acceptable physical condition. And and that's pretty much all they can do. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I've said this um, earlier, that there, there's so much more that should be taken into account. Yeah. Um, there are many cruel and abusive issues involved in animal circuses. Um, first and foremost, um, the animals, and I'm including domestic and wild animals in, in, in the category animals, circus animals, um, they don't choose to perform on demand. Um, they are made to perform for financial gain. Um, this is not respecting an animal's right to live. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is slavery, yes. uh, in short. Um, yes, that is slavery. Um, so, Kathy, will you guys be writing letters to the government as well? You know, I know that you mentioned that you will be doing that. You also mentioned that you will be putting up a petition, if I um, remember right. Yes, yes. Our, our petition is up as of this morning. The link is on our page. I will forward you that link as well. Um, uh, and that's, yeah, it's a, it's a general um, petition to outright ban um, any animal circuses. Um, addressed to to the South African government. Yes. Um, so that is available now, um, yes. today. Yes. And Tony, from your side, I mean, you would love to be part of that. You would love to. I mean, you've already written so many letters. You've already spoken yes, to the government no, of course, officials. Yes. Yeah. Um, and and here's the thing. The the uh, unfortunate reality is that our South African government will not accept online petitions. But the great thing about these online petitions is that it's about creating awareness. Yeah. And the more Absolutely. people who sign them, um, I mean, I've I mean, I've literally taken ten thousand signatures to the city of Cape Town, and mm -hmm. it's been and you know we I mean we gave a hundred thousand signatures, handwritten signatures. To Parliament, demanding that animals be recognised as sentient, and it was literally laughed at. I mean, it took years to collect a hundred thousand signatures in a in a in a country like ours, which is so loaded with so many other issues that re require and demand attention all the time. Yes. Um, and it was it was basically laughed at. Yes. Uh, and let's see but, what is. But sorry, it is no. sorry, but it is about creating public awareness and and also. Uh, whether they accept it or not, or, or acknowledge it or not, um, there is the fact that they are now aware of the number of South African citizens who want change in certain aspects, especially when it comes Absolutely. to animal issues, Absolutely. which is which is vital. Um, yeah, there is definitely um, some some power um, in those online petitions. Yes. 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 Um, so. Yeah. Um, so uh -huh. I'm so sorry for um, for intervening. So so basically, what we want to do is, you know, the word sentient for people who don't understand what sentient is, that means that you are a living, breathing feeling. organism, feeling organism, an animal, a mammal, a human. Um, you can feel emotions. You can feel pain. That is what sentient means. And if you look at any of these circus videos where they're abusing these animals, these animals are making noise. They're running away. They have their nails out, scratching the ground. Okay, they're trying to get away. Uh, they're screaming, doing whatever they're I think, doing. I'm sorry. I, I think um, an important point to make is that um, uh, where the wild animal um, acts come in, so the lions and the tigers and, and whatnot, um, they may be born into captivity, mm. um, but that doesn't, that doesn't equate to them being domesticated. They mm. still have the wild instinct. Yes. Um, yes. And, no, of course not. And, absolutely. And often, yeah. We agree sorry, with you there. Often, mm, no, sorry, I was saying we absolutely agree with you there. And, mm. and it's so important that people understand that a a, an animal born in captivity just means it's a captive animal. Um, That's it. And, and if we look at our feline companions at home, we know that they are, they are domesticated to a certain degree, but they most certainly still have their wild side to them. And that, that will always yes. be there. And there's a significant difference between Tiddles, who weighs four kilos, and a 280-kilogram predator um, yes. who, is, who is at the top of the food chain um, and who could easily take us out with one snot club, to, yes. to put it in perspective. And, you know, and, it's... And just, 
and just on that, I mean, there are many stories that that, that surface about um, circus lions and tigers lashing out. Absolutely. You know, at their, at their trainers and, um, you know, members of the public even. Um, yeah, no, it's, 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 they definitely, they have that wild instinct. Yes, they do. Um, and, and because they're wild, um, you know, being kept, you know, even in their little small enclosures, their little rest enclosures, you just have to look at them to see that they're not happy and that there's a problem. Yes. Um, you know, they, they become extremely stressed and bored and, and depressed, and, and you can see that in their behavior patterns. Um, and, yeah, you can see it, you know, you can, you can just, it's blatantly obvious. Um, they're not meant to be. They're not yes. meant to be where they are. Yeah. Okay, so Kathy, so thank you so much. So basically that's ban animal trading and they are also calling on both the South African government and Namibian government to ban animal circuses. I'm gonna say goodbye mm -hmm. to you now and then I'm gonna okay. phone I'm gonna phone Savannah because Savannah is also not able to get on. Um and uh, we will be speaking to you soon. Please send me those petition links and also the letters that you'll be yes. writing to the government so that we can put that onto the chat um link. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much, Kathy. And thank you. Thank you, Petro. Cheers, Tony. Cheers, Joe. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Okay, so let me quickly phone Savannah. Do you wanna do you wanna do something? I, I love you next to me. I think you should <laughs> stay next to me unless you have um hang on, not Savannah. I'm looking for Hannah to come on. Yay, Savannah. Okay. Hey. So um Hannah might also might also come on now, but happy to I'm very sorry, but the link's not working. I'm able to make a conversation today. Okay, so Hannah, we are speaking to Savannah, um, who represents Namibians Against Animals in Circuses. Savannah, hello. I'm so happy that you could make it. Please, um, you know, raise your concerns and state your request to the government. Thank you. Okay, I've been listening to you ladies all morning. Hi, Tony, Pietro. Oh, nice to you. Hannah that's spoken. Um, I think you've all raised very, very valid points. I mean, there, there's not too much that I can even elaborate more on, I'd say you've really gone all out. I think what, what I can say now, I think most of us know Victor Hugo, the, the very um, poet, who said that my idea was time has come. And if Tony has just said that for 10 years, she's been trying to, to protest against the circuses with an, animals happening, I don't think we have a better time than now to, to make this come into being, to, to let this take effect, that we stop it once and for all. Yes, I think there is no better time. And thank you so much for saying that because I actually wanted to um, scribble that down on paper this morning. Savannah, I can't agree with you more. There is no better time than now to stop this. Yes, no, we've got yeah. to stop it before. So, it's absolutely. Yes, we have to stop it. And the time is now. I mean, it has to stop. It, it, this, look, animal rights has taken over mainstream, not only in South Africa and Namibia, but everywhere. It, it's huge. We have, I don't have a very clear um, connection with you ladies. I don't hear you. No, that's fine. We keep on losing you, but just say what you need to say and I will make, right. make notes and then I will repeat that. All right, no problem. All right, what, what I was saying is, uh, you know, I don't think us as Namibians really want to ban circuses. Nothing against this. It would be great, as Tony said, to, to have circuses with wonderful entertainment, acrobatics, and the circus soleil type of, of entertainment. Just no animals. As Tony also said, to spend your entire lifetime serving a life sentence in a cage, basically for something you've never done. You're a prisoner, you are locked in a cage for something, nothing more than to amuse people. And we go to a circus and we have an hour or an hour and a half, two hours of entertainment and these animals for that amount of time that we want to enjoy ourselves have a lifetime of suffering. All they know is lying in filthy cages, doesn't matter what the weather conditions are most of the time, lying in their own excrement and filth and just no connection with, with the rest of their own kind, their own family. It's like 
being orphaned, being, you know, ripped away from everything that's important to you. And for me, I just think it, there is a time now where, where we are searching for so many animal rights only because of the existence of so many human wrongs. There wouldn't be a need for animal rights if there weren't animal wrongs. It, it's just so wrong to take any being out of its natural habitat and to put it into any environment where it's got to be, obviously, as you've said, beaten and forced to do things that it doesn't normally do naturally. No, no animal is going to do any stupid thing like do handstands, elephants doing handstands, and running around in tutus and bears riding on cycles and tigers and lions jumping to fire. God forbid these animals are terrible of fire and they have to do things like that. So obviously yeah. they have to be beaten into submission and only then will they do that. So it, it's wrong. I think anybody with even half a brain would realize that this is not something that that sounds right. I mean, I think the important thing that human beings need to exercise and they need to start learning it if they don't know what it is now is empathy. Basically putting yourself in any other's shoes, situation. Yeah. If you can ask yourself the question, would I like to be in a cage traveling for, what, 1,600 kilometers? Doesn't matter what the weather conditions are. 1,600 kilometers in a cage, traveling the road to get from one place to the next, just so as to entertain crowds. I mean, I can't imagine what goes through these animals' minds and bodies and little souls when they are in this cage, in the circus, and all these spectators around them cheering, screaming, loud music. I mean, most animals are terrified of, of great noise because they hear in much higher decibels than we do. So before anything else, the, the fear, the whips going, children screaming, music blaring, it's, it's just so far from their natural habitat as possibly can be. So me, along with so many wonderful people in the movie that would love to online talking to this film but this cannot because of work and other constraints. But they stand alongside me and we are truly begging our government, parliament, our honourable minister, Bambashit Peter, who is the Minister of uh, the Environment and Tourism, to please stand alongside us and ban not the circuses, but the use of wild animals specifically in, in circuses. Yes wrong and there's no need for it at all. Thank you so much Savannah. It was very well said. No, there, no. There, was, there was just one thing I would like to just clarify is that um, from, from our side, from Beauty Without Cruelty side, we never ever discuss the training methods um, of the animals um, simply because in, in the case of this particular uh, circus we do not know how they train the animals and our logic is it doesn't matter how they're trained, it is that they are trained at all. Exactly. Um, logic states that a certain amount of dominance comes into play because, because you have, as I said, 280 kilogram um, predator on your hands. And, and I mean, we've seen plenty of photos of, of the animals in the ring where their ears are back and they're snarling and those are, those are definitely not... I'm glad to be here, faces. Yes. They, they're definitely displaying everything. Yes. Um, but, but I think it's just important to note that, as I say, we, we, from, from our side, we don't ever discuss the training methods because it's not how they're trained. It is that they are trained. That they are trained, mm. of course. Yes. So 100%. And, and, yes. But, but also from a point of view of making sure that whatever information we share with the public is accurate so nobody can ever turn around to us us collectively and say you made this observation you've made this statement and this is blatantly false 
which uh, then which then yeah. chips away at our credibility and our argument that the animal shouldn't be there in the first place. Yeah, of course. Yeah. No, that's hundred yeah. percent. And you know, as, as Liberty said, Namibia specifically, we we are so proud of what we call home because we are one of the last natural places on earth, I think, with so many beautiful wild animals, and that's where you are supposed to see them in their wild natural habitat, being lions as lions are supposed to be. And everybody's welcome to come and see them. This is this is what, what it's all about. You don't if you want to see what lions are all about, then going to a circus is the wrong education for a child. Yeah. Kerry. You teach children to respect animals and take them out and put yourself in the cage and go into their environment respectfully. Go quietly in your car, no noise, no loud music. Stand, sit, do whatever you want in your car and just look in awe at these beautiful animals. They are so precious and there are so few left. It brings, it really makes me want to cry. It's very sad, very sad. You want to make me cry as well, Savannah. You know, I think you've, you've mentioned, um, you, you, you've said the most beautiful words now. And um, yes, what Tony says, you know, we don't know how they train these animals and we can only trust that they haven't used um, brutality. And uh, we don't want to say that they have if they have not, you know. But the main thing is that they did take these animals and uh, they did train them. And that's where the cruelty comes in mm, is, absolutely. you know, you made something out of, you made something else out of an animal that's supposed to be wild and beautiful and appreciated in the wild and be in the wild. So they, they would be there. Yeah. So just to cover what Zavanna was saying, she was saying that no animal would do these tricks in their natural environment, that they are afraid of fire. They are afraid of noise. They are afraid of crowds of people. They are afraid of the whip. OK. And then what Tony said, you know, in some of the images, you do see the ears full to the back. You do see them showing the teeth, growling. You know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist or or very um, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to, to learn the body language of animals. And could you observe them? Yeah. If you know little yeah. cats, the cats are the same. Cats are cats. Mm -hmm. If you take your cat, it's going to react in the same way. But your cat's not going to kill you. <laughs> exactly. Your cat's not going to kill you and eat you. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Unless you haven't fed the cat. Or So, yes. No, Savannah, thank you so much for that. So, we are waiting for one more person well, to come on no. board. Um, I'm so grateful that you joined us and that you um, spoke so beautifully about Namibia and about Namibia's animals. And I want to read something. You can stay on, on, on board until we get somebody else to come on. Tony's okay. letter to, to the government, uh, Romeo Muyunda. Is that how it's spelled? I'm the wrong person to ask. Anyway, so <laughs> she wrote to the government. She said, a number of Namibians are most concerned that an animal circus is planning to head your way, and I'm writing on their behalf. Namibia is synonymous with wildlife and conservation. Just a second, what you were saying. This may not always be the case within legislation, but internationally, you are a country renowned for the beauty and splendor of your animals and the rare luxury of viewing them in the freedom of their natural landscapes. Of viewing them in the freedom and the beauty of their natural landscapes. Captivity is not something that I believe belongs to the idea of the wonderful wilderness which Namibia seeks to preserve. Beautiful words, Tony. Beautiful Wonderful letter words. written. Thank you. I really yeah. It. yeah. You know, this is from a, a South African who appreciates the beauty in Namibia, who wants to go, but there's so much cruelty towards animals there, right? And then this circus, and she says, furthermore, concerns include the import of exotic wildlife to Namibia and risk of diseases, the lack of potential oversight, and these are justifiable and valid reasons to refuse a permit. We are requesting that a permit not be issued for them to travel Namibia with animals. At this point, some 53 countries have banned animal circuses in some form, and the list is growing. That's right. And you know, Namibians, organizations. Sorry? I was saying Namibians in general, it would seem, are against the circus. There was a poll on one of our local radio stations, and uh, although it came to an end and there were just 4% more for the four side than they're against, it still shows that there's a very strong reaction to banning. They don't want that. Good. So I, I would say it definitely does speak volumes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we have one more person that needs to join, Savannah. Um, thank you so much for coming on board and joining the call. And I'm so sorry that you couldn't get online. Um, I definitely will. Yeah, earlier. 
yeah and i hope that we will all stand together in solidarity for these animals um and work together with the government not against the government but with the government okay to to be proudly namibian and proudly south african i guess opi call um Renal, um can you log on great to meet you yes thank you, you too. <laughs> can you log out oh, okay. thank you so much savannah Ta guys bye can you log out and in again so we have one more person <laughs> thank you so much for sitting through this with me today Ah, oh, but as Tony said, she cannot believe that she still has to protest this, and I cannot believe this. Thing. Okay, so Savannah is. Thank you so much for sitting through this with me today. Oh, Savannah, you need to. Yeah. As Tony said, she cannot believe that she still has to protest this, and I cannot believe this. Yay! So I'm going to just quickly do this. Mute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yay, Renal, thank you so much. Um, Renal is from Annie's Animal Legal Fund in Namibia, and she's a very special person that I've um, that's contacted us and said, okay, they would want to be part of it. Well, actually, I contacted them, and um, she's amazing, and she is all for animals in Namibia, and she would like to take this to the next step. So please listen to what she has to say and support her and follow her and get this done, not only for Namibia, but also for South Africa. Renal? Hi, Pietru. Hi, ladies. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I've been listening to you girls all morning, and you've, um, you've um, done a, said, said a lot of things. <laughs> okay. So I think, um, Pietru, is there maybe a little bit of a delay on the line? Um, we're going to, there's, you, you're fine. You can speak. There is a little bit of a delay, but don't worry too much about it. We will keep quiet. Okay, okay, perfect. So I think maybe I can start off with um, just uh, telling you what we do at Annie's and what we are, and then I'll go into the rest of it. So basically, we are a group of lawyers that concern ourselves. So we've lost her, but she's going to... Okay, there we go. We've lost you. So what I'm going to do? Do you think I should phone her also via WhatsApp? Mm. So, Renal, I think I'm going to phone you via WhatsApp. Um, it's like or well. Pietro, so, sorry, it seems our connection is, is bad. Yes, I'm, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to phone you. Hello. Hi. So, me, yes. Yes. Okay. Can you, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. So, you can speak. <laughs> okay. So, um, Annie, so, what we do at Annie's is we're a bunch of lawyers and we concern ourselves specifically with the legislation. And we. Um, we try to develop the legislation in Southern Africa to improve animal welfare and animal rights. So, with that in mind, that is what I am doing here today. Um, I think it's important to just, we've talked about a lot of emotions in terms of animal welfare and animal rights now and the animals in circuses, but I think it's important that we just bring some rationality also to the conversation. Um, in Namibia, currently, the position is that the use of animals in circuses is not banned, it's regulated in terms of legislation. And we do have an act that deals with that. It's called the Performing Animals Protection Act. It's very old. It was written and promulgated in 1935. Now, the reason why I mentioned it. Okay, well. We're going to be connecting. Okay, we're back. Yes. So the reason why I mentioned the date is that values in society develop. It's not a static thing. I think the connection on that side is really poor. Mm. Yeah, but we'll, we'll be patient. I'm going to 
phoner again. Okay, let's phone her again. Hi, Renal. So will we try again? Yes, please. Okay. So um, I will recap from here. Legislation is born from policy, and policy is driven by what do the people who want. The, um, also, the values of society. Now, if you look at what is a circus, because we, we're talking now about circuses specifically, and it's difficult to put a definition on a circus, but I've looked it up, and there are a couple of definitions. But one thing that struck me is that the circus developed in ancient Rome already, and the modern circus, as we know it, the big thing, so, So the concept of animals in circuses comes from 1768. In the interim, we as a society have changed our views on how animals fit into us as a or fit in with us as a society, and we've developed. But yet we've got this archaic type of entertainment, um, which was first developed in the 17, 1800s and, and, and it's still continuing. And that's why we are now revisiting this issue. And what you've done this morning is you've expressed the changing views of society and you've asked the legislature to take notice of it. Um, and Basically, we've asked, yes. Okay. Yeah. So, um, that's the one point that I want to make, um, um, which I think is important. And then the other point that I want to make is um, specifically with, I'll come to the fore because of the McLaren Circus um, planning to visit Namibia. And that is raised different questions and different groups have sprung up all over the country and but it seems like there's at least one golden thread amongst all of these groups and that is that the use of animals in circuses must either be restricted or banned and that we all agree on irrespective of whether we take a liberal view on the issue or a conservative view on the issue so one of the things that i am um, um, in, involved in is to try and get an umbrella organization of the ground where we can drive this shared common objective from. So for that purpose we've established a voluntary association um, which Savannah just represented, it's the Libyans Against Animals in Circuses and um, we would like to invite people who share this value or this objective to also join this organization. Fantastic. So how do we join, um, uh, Renal? What, how do we, you know, I know that Tony and myself, we joined yesterday, so many, so, so, so many others, but how do we get the public to join? Will you have a website up? Do you have a link? Do, is there an email? How do we get people to join? So we have a Facebook page. So they have a Facebook page? <laughs> it's called Namibians Against Animal and Circuses and the link is um, and the website and the link is in the YouTube link below so that is what Renelle is inviting you to she's inviting you and um, whether you're a Namibian South African to join the Namibians Against Animals and Circuses and then also to join the association so that they can take that to Parliament and well, take that. yes Prat? okay yeah so we'll make We'll make, we'll make copies of the application available on on the different social media platforms. It's really a uh, one page, even less application that you complete, and then you're a member of this organisation. It's on you, so there's no membership fees, nothing. It really is just a group of people that come together with a common purpose and a common goal, and we are just trying to coordinate all the different efforts currently going on in Namibia. Um, in, in terms of one joint collaboration yes. effort. Yes. 
It's amazing, Renal. Thank you so much, and thank you so much for your time as well. I know that you were extremely busy. Um, it was barely we barely had time yesterday to get you online. So thank you so much for your patience for today, for taking the time to speak to us, and also everybody else that has come on board, and also the people that couldn't get on board. I'm so sorry about the software that we couldn't get you on board. Renal, I'm going to say goodbye to you now, and then I'm going to invite people. I'm going to follow up. Um, something that I want to say to people is like subscribe follow if you don't want to follow me you follow the organizations and they are beauty without cruelty south africa and ban animal trading south africa these are the organizations to follow to ban animal circuses okay we don't want to restrict it we want to ban animal circuses there are enough people that are talented enough that can join these circuses and make the acts and the tricks and the whatever so much more special okay so that we can go there and we can be entertained by human beings not animals then in Namibia, we have Namibia against animals and circuses, and this is what Renal is was talking about, is and was talking about. Okay, for you to become, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna close it. I'll I'll say thank you to everybody later. So, in Namibia, we have um, Namibians against animals and circuses, and then the Annie's Animal Legal Fund. Follow up with them. Join, become a member. It doesn't cost you anything. All it costs you is compassion. Kindness, you're giving a voice to the animals, and we have Renal is back. <laughs> Hello, Renal. <laughs> That's fine. I think I just want to make one closing statement, and that is that. Yes, please. We can't hear. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to. So we can't hear you. So you know what I'm going to do? So I'm going to phone you one more time and then we are going to um, end the call. Hi, yes, your closing thank statement. You. <laughs> yes, thank you for allowing me yes. um, or indulging me. I think I just want to make one closing statement in terms of the Namibian government specifically. They have been very supportive in the past. Damn you, network. Oh. In in the different forums that I have engaged with the Namibian government, I have found that they are very cooperative and willing to listen to the people of Namibia. So I am full of hope that um, our voices in terms of... You have to have a lot of patience for this. Mm -hmm. You are back? Go. Yes. I'm full of confidence that we will receive an audi audience with, uh, with government and that they will take action. Oh, that sounds so, excellent. That sounds excellent. That will make Tony so happy. And then she can visit Namibia and enjoy all the splendor and the beauty that she wrote about to the government. And we will welcome her as Namibians as a true guardian and friend for animals. Um, yes, yes. yes, and we will spoil you rotten. <laughs> well, not spoil you rotten, we will spoil you like a queen. So, um, now I'm gonna say goodbye to you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Charlie. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, so just one final thing. So this is what we want. One final thing. We call on a ban of, for animal circuses in South Africa and Namibia, okay? Animals have a right to be free. Animals have a right to be in the wild and remain wild, okay? And if not in the wild, at least then in animal sanctuaries equipped to nurture, rehabilitate animals that have been used, conditioned, and traumatized by cruel practices and cruel experiences that take place in circuses and other establishments that use them as entertainment. South Africa, let's do better. And Namibia, let's do better. Tony, thank you so much for your valuable time today. No, pleasure. Yes. We, it, it's, uh, and it's been fantastic to actually see some of the people that, that we've been dealing with online. Well, sort yes. of, you know, um, to, to meet, the, meet the voices behind the faces that, we, that we've seen on, on social media, yes. which is great. And then I want to do one final request. This takes money. Okay, it takes money to have these organizations run and up and do the work they do. So please support them. 
Beauty Without Cruelty South Africa, Ban Animal Trading South Africa, the SPCA in Namibia, Annie's Animal Legal Fund. It all takes money. Please support them. Okay. Even the new association that's come um, that Annie's Legal uh, Annie's Animal Legal Fund in Renal is putting up now Namibians against animal and circuses. Make your contributions. Okay. And Tony and them have offered to relocate these animals to sanctuaries. Please donate. Please sponsor. Please come on board as an individual who cares about animals and support her. She does amazing work, just amazing, amazing work. And I am so grateful that she's on this planet and that everybody that I've been speaking to today is on this planet. So we're going to end the call and we hope that the government will listen and we're going to share this far and wide. And I will send this to them, to all the offices, and I will send this to all the organizations. Um, and they can also send this through to the government if they have the patience to listen to this, right? So... Any final words? Let's stop the animals in the circus. Please support animal-free entertainment and encourage your friends and family to support animal-free entertainment because we've got so much amazing, uh, uh, to say the word again, entertainment available. There really is no need to go and see cat, uh, big cats in, in cages. Yeah. It is that something. It's sad. It's actually sad. That's what it is. It's sad to see them in the cages. It's sad to, to even support that. So with all the love in the world, with all the love in the world, can we please be kind to animals? Please, government. Please, Namibian government. Please, South African government. Please, Namibians. Please, South Africans. Please, Africans. Let's do better. Bye. Bye.